Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fino Field in Milford, Massachusetts for day two of the Legion Baseball State Tournament. It's Ashland Post 77 Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton and WACA TV in Ashland. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call. Connor Donovan is on camera this evening as Post 77 entered the winner's bracket after a great win to start off the state tournament as they took down Somerset 16 to two. The bats were flying yesterday for post 77 and they hope to continue that today against a very familiar opponent as they will take on zone five rival Newton for this state tournament matchup. They certainly uh, have gotten a good look at Newton this season, Larry. And they came out on the short side of the two meetings this year, but they are hoping to reverse that luck in this state tournament matchup. And Larry, you've seen uh, this Newton team before. What are your thoughts on this game tonight? Well, I don't see a lot of players that were in the last game. I'm not seeing either catcher, uh, the catcher that played against Milford last night and not the one that played against Post 77. I am familiar with Newton being a 30 year resident and I know where their post is down in Nonantum for so you folks that are interested, you go to Wikipedia and look up Nonantum, Massachusetts. They actually have their own language down there. Uh, that's been talked about on the late night shows. But 77 uh, has shown me a lot and just taking their infield today, they looked very crisp compared well, to their usual infield. Well, it should certainly be a great game, but without further ado, we're gonna go to the national anthem right now. Okay. Ask you to repeat after me, the American Legion Baseball call the sportsmanship. As an American Legion baseball player, coach or official, I will keep the rules Keep the faith with my teammates. Keep my tempo. Keep myself fit. Keep a stop, hurl, and defeat. Keep my pride under in victory. Keep a sound soul, a clean mind, and a healthy body. Have a good game, guys. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Fino Field in Milford, Massachusetts for the state tournament matchup between two Zone 5 foes, Newton post 440 and Ashland post 77. Newton finished the regular season 13-6-1 overall, and they got a, ve a very impressive win over Milford on night one of the state tournament. 
And of course, Milford, the host team of this year's state tournament. Ashland Post 77. They are 16 and 6 overall. They finished the regular season 12 and 6. And they ended up getting a 16 to 2 victory yesterday afternoon. And Larry, they came into the state tournament ready to play as they made the uh, statement yesterday that they are not fooling around and they are ready to play some serious baseball here at Fino Field. They only had to play seven innings because it was a mercy game. And mercifully for us, we got out of this 115 degree press box. Right. And the same fate met, met uh, Somerset this afternoon when they played Milford. They got mercyed again. So they came down here at 31 runs put on them and they scored six. So they, Barnstable, and Northampton are out. Absolutely, and we'll go over uh, more of the other games in the tournament throughout the broadcast. Let's take a look at the post-77 diamond. Jake Obed is the pitcher. His battery mate is Sean Jouette behind home plate. Zach Pesson over at first base. The second baseman, Ronan Bates, as Jimmy Hodgson, the first hitter of the game, steps in. Ball outside on the first pitch. Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Lewis Rossi over at third base. From left to right, Ben Thomas, Brad Seymour, and Tom Ancy for post 77 as Obid delivers another ball there. 2 and 0 to Jimmy Hodgson, the shortstop for Newton. Let's take a look at this Newton batting order. Jimmy Hodgson, the shortstop, leading things off. Tom Byrne, the center fielder, batting second as that one is outside. Jack Marsjanic is the second baseman, batting third. Mike Gately, the catcher, hitting cleanup. Brendan Mignon, the first baseman, batting fifth. Matt Swain, the left fielder, batting sixth. That one inside, and that is a four-pitch walk to start things off. Batting seventh is Henry Bonenfont, the DH. Batting eighth, Rich Alexi, who is the right fielder. Batting ninth, the third baseman, Noah Shelton. And the pitcher is Brian Coker for post 440. That one outside, five straight balls thrown by Jake Obed. And Obed had a uh, pretty good game offensively playing outfield yesterday. Came up with a couple of those, of the uh, couple of the many hits that Post 77 had in the 16 to two victory. Runner taking a lead off of first, that pitch just high. It is a beautiful night here at Fino Field as the lights are on. 68 degrees, clear, pretty clear skies, few clouds in the area, but none of them uh, threatening. And it is just a beautiful, crisp night for baseball. Wind up and the pitch, there's a strike. Flag is standing still in center field, so that shouldn't affect anything today. Right, very little, if any, wind out there. From the stretch, runner leading off of first, set to deliver the two and one. And there's another strike. Jewett did two. a nice job pulling that one in. Tom Byrne, the hitter. Jimmy Hodgson over at first. Top of the first. Here at Fino. We got about an 8-10 start to this one. We'll take you through all the results of the state tournament so far here at Fino Field. From the stretch is Obid, runner leading off of first. The check-in, runner slides back safe. Well, in the first round, it kicked off yesterday, Saturday, July 22nd. First game, 9.30 a.m., Braintree defeated Shrewsbury 6-5. Shrewsbury uh, came back and threatened towards the end of the game, but Braintree was able to finish them off to stay in the winner's bracket. Northampton defeated Barnstable. 11 to one, that was a 4.30 game. We were the second game of the day. Ashland beating Somerset 16 to two as there is strike three, one away. That'll bring up Jack Marsjanic, the second baseman. And then the final game, of course, it was the uh, host team, Milford with the nightcap taking on Newton, but Newton got the victory over post 59. Despite Milford having a six to three lead at one point, Newton came away with the 11 to 8 victory to finish off the first night of the state tournament. That one's followed into the backstop, 0 and 1. Well, in action so far today, the first game, 9.30 a.m., 
in the loser's bracket. Shrewsbury, they got a W, knocking Barnstable out of the two-loss elimination tournament with a 9-3 win. And then you had Milford get back on the winning side of things as they took down Somerset 15-4 and knocked them out of the tournament. And then the game that happened just before us, Braintree over Northampton in the winner's bracket, 13-8. Braintree 2-0 in state tournament play as that one's fouled away. Newton's hitters seem to be very aggressive tonight, much more so than the last time we saw them. And they were an aggressive running team. My memory serves me right, but all they've done against Jake Obert is taken a couple show-me steps over there at first base and haven't. And Newton's been hitting the ball very well. Checking at first, the ball is going to get away, and that is going to allow... Hodgson, the easy advance to second base. I was just going to say, Jake Obud had a couple of pickoff throws over there that looked real good, showing quick feet. Ball That's went. only one uh, one extra base on a throw from an infielder yep. that goes out of play. As Mars Janik will take some time to get ready for the next pitch. One's fouled away. Count is 0 and 2 on Mars Janik. Jake Obid had a nice two RBI double. Yesterday in the victory over Somerset in a three-run second inning as this has popped up. Oh, a bit calling for it. The runner no, got in the his run way. Got the runner ran right into Obit as he was trying to make the catch. Called him out. And he should be out. Well, it was a foul he, ball, but. Right. But that would have been an easy catch for Obit if. The runner was not in his way. Coach Johnson does not like that. He's going to come out and I think try to cool down Obit a little bit. He knows Jake Obit is not happy over that situation. And he doesn't want Obit to get into any trouble where he would get thrown out of the game. So I think he's trying to cool him down here. And now Mars Janik is hearing something from the umpire he's not liking. So I wonder if he received some kind of warning or maybe they changed the call to call him out. So, Larry, I mean, what's the rule on that situation? I know it was a foul ball, but do you think the, that's runner's interference? The defensive player has the right to the ball, and the offensive player, batter, runner, runner hitter here, has to get out of the way. Now, does that change if it's a foul ball? That's I don't think so. I can see the umpire having for not calling runner's interference. Obed throws that one outside. We've got our uh, fine staffers on the other side there talking about the same call. One and two count. If I'm the umpire, I'm calling that hitter out. That was blatant interference. That one low. And I think I would have might have just warned Obit about something. Obit is still, I think, a little bit heated over that call. And I can't blame him. Runner leading off of second. Obit takes a look and now is set to deal. This is hit in the air to right field. And that is going to drop down for a base hit. Being waved around third is Hodgson. And it is going to be one to nothing Newton. An RBI double for Mars Janik. Maybe Sean Jewett should go out and talk to Jake right now. Because he feels he feels as though he was interfered with and then the kid gets a second chance. He was gets interfered a base, with base no hit. doubt about that as Gately steps in. I mean, isn't that exact situation why that rule exists? True. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Right. The a fielder has the right ball. to the ball. Runner leading off of second. That's followed into the backstop. I thought that one was the going batter to go runner. In the press box for yeah, a moment. The, yeah. I'll cover you. But the <laughs> batter runner 
has that 45-foot uh, box that he's got to stay in just in case a catcher gets a bunt. That's fouled into the backstop, one, two. If he's outside or inside that 45-foot box and a catcher throws down and hits him in the back, he's out. Oh. Right. Wind up in the pitch. That one low. Yeah, I'm not liking that call. That certainly, uh, or the the non-call, I should say. The 2-2. Two -two. Swinging strike, got him. Second strikeout for Obid. That'll bring up Brendan Mignon, the first baseman. Obid uh, working pretty quickly out there so far tonight, Larry. Yeah, exactly. This kid up at the plate is uh, probably their top pitcher. He may not be available because uh, he may have pitched late into uh, the zone playoffs against Waltham, but he's the number two pitcher at BC High behind Mike Vassell, who's already committed to University of Virginia. He did so in his verbal commitment. As this is oh. up the third base side, it gets by Rossi. That's a base hit. Another run going to try to score. The throw in is not going to be in time. It's 2 0 Newton. An RBI base hit for Mignon. He advanced to second on the throw in. Mars Janik scores. And that'll bring up Matt Swain with one on, two outs, two in. Matt Swain's the left fielder. Coming into this game, Jake Obid was the team leader behind Sean Babineau pitching wise. He's thrown the most innings for post 77 this season, 31 and a third, a 268 ERA. And he's throwing from the stretch right now as Newton with the early rally here. There's a strike. Nice breaking pitch by Jake. That third base area has been uh, haunted by there all day long. I don't know what's underneath there, but Lou almost had his head taken off. As this is hit high in the air to right field, and that is going to drop just in front of Ansi, and another run is going to score for Newton. An RBI single for Swain. That was a tough ball to get to. Ansi almost had it, but fell just short of making the catch. It'll bring up Henry Bonenfant, the DH. Runner leading off of first. And the runner's going to take off. They got him. Caught stealing is Swain. But Newton does plate three runs and leads the game 3 nothing as we head to the bottom of the first on HCAM and WACA TV. Great. Bottom of the first inning, post 77 coming up to the plate, trailing 3 nothing. Jake Obed, the pitcher, to start things off. Takes the first pitch low from Brian Coker. Let's take a look at the Newton Diamond. Brian Coker on the mound. Mike Gately behind home plate. Brendan Mignon is the first baseman. Jack Mars Janik, the second baseman. The shortstop, Jimmy Hodgson. Noah Shelton at third base as there's a ball. From left to right, Matt Swain, Thomas Byrne, Richard Alexi. Four post, 440. We'll go over the post 77 batting order after this pitch as this is hit high in the air over to center field, ranging under it and making the catch is Thomas Byrne, one away. It'll bring up Ronan Bates, the second baseman. The order for post 77 is Jake Obid, the pitcher, just led things off with a flyout. Ronan Bates batting second, playing second base. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, batting third. Ben Thomas hitting cleanup, playing left field. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, batting fifth. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, batting sixth, that pitch inside. Tom Onsi, the right fielder, batting seventh. Batting eighth is the catcher, Sean Jouett. And rounding out the order is Brad Seymour, the center fielder for Ashland, post 77. Couple There's things, a Tom. Towards the end of the inning, as uh, Ashland was walking off, Jake Obid was absolutely hot. And oh, his teammates had to corral him a little bit. But on the flip side, Sean Jouette made a nice throw down to second base. I thought the kid had it swiped. But uh, Sean erased him. Yeah, that, that was a great throw up to second base to 
get the runner. And after that, heated situation uh, for Obid. And, uh, of course, the three-run rally that Newton had brewing, you certainly wanted to get out of that inning as quickly as possible. We did get some uh, uh, third-party information from a uh, patched umpire that he would have called that runner out for interfering with Jake Obit. I, I think most umpires would have called him out. But it is a judgment call, we were also told as well. So the umpire has to make the judgment. Was it avoidable? I'm not going to say anything sarcastic. <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt in this situation, but it is what it is. A swinging strike there, two away. Jackson Horning will step in. Post 440 in white, wearing their whites today, and Ashland wearing their blues. Yep, post 77 is the home team for this one. It was decided on a coin flip. That one outside, 1-0. One oh. Burn, the center fielder last night, made an outstanding catch, one of the best you'll ever see against post 59. Laid out for it. There's a strike, 1-1. One one. Ashland and Newton met up. Two times this season, right back to the pitcher. And he will make the catch on the comeback. Or a one, two, three, bottom of the first. To the top of the second we go. Newton leading Ashland three to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the second inning. A three nothing lead for Newton. Seven, eight, and nine do up. Henry Bonenfont. Which Alexi and Noah Shelton to step in for post 440. So we'll get set to deal. Leg lift and the pitch. Outside it goes. It's a 1 0 count. His strike to ball ratio isn't looking very good right now but we'll hope he'll settle down with the bottom of the order. He deals. And that one is in there for a strike. Here are the scenarios for Ashland. If they win tonight, they'll be back here tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. So that one is hit up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, not a problem. Four to three. Goes the first hitter of the inning. That'll bring up Rich Alexi, the right fielder. So if Ashland wins tonight, they will be back here at Fino tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. scheduled start time against Braintree. If they lose, they will be the second game of the day, a 4.30 p.m. start against Shrewsbury. Swing strike there. Either opponent is going to be some good competition as we are down to the final six here in the state tournament. Of course, it started off with eight who were eliminated this weekend. And a couple more will get eliminated tomorrow night. That went outside. Now, Shrewsbury was a surprise to me as they went 24 and 2, I believe, in zone 5 this year. Zone 4. So in four, excuse me. I get full my fours and my fives mixed up. It happens. Got to hold up my fingers. <laughs> um, but Brainchie beat them, and they have a very, very deep pitching staff. So up the right side, foul, two and two. Tomorrow, weather permitting, we'll get to see Sean Babineau. He'll make an appearance after a 91-pitch effort against Andover. Right. Weather was... Uh, could be an issue tomorrow. And there is strike three. That is the third strikeout of the game for Jake Obed. Two away. Noah Shelton to step in. Jake's got to be happy with those uh, two quick outs. Keep his pitch count down. 
Line up in the pitch. And therefore, strike on the breaking ball. I think Coach Johnson has a decision to make at 75 pitches and the weather report as far as rest is concerned. But Tom Monzi was under the 75 pitch mark. He pitched 55 pitches yesterday and they got him out of there because the lead was so huge. As this is up the middle, picked up by Oban as he gloves it and throws it over to first. One to three goes Shelton and it's a one, two, three top half of the second. To the bottom of the second we go. Newton leading Ashland three to nothing. Bottom of the second inning, four, five, and six do up for post 77. Ben Thomas, Zach Pesson, and Lewis Rossi. Brian Coker set for his second inning of work. Post 77 is going to need to get the bats going. That one outside. Jake Obid made a little bit of a statement as he caught that ball on a short hop to end the inning. He wanted that post 440 runner to run all the way. And he gunned him out with a little extra oomph on the ball. Oh, yeah. He's, he's playing uh, angry, you can tell. <laughs> we'll see if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But as of right now, it seems like he is fired up. And he wants I, – I think he wants to win this game more than anything right now after that call. 0-2. Oh. He had to throw some extra pitches. He threw 40 through two innings. Coming into the state tournament, Ben Thomas hit a three – 80 this season, a 508 on base percentage. And that's in 50 at bats. Pretty impressive numbers by the cleanup man. And one, two. And a cleanup man that high. can run. Sorry, didn't mean to step on you there. But he can go get him on the base pads. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, pulls him off the bag, and Thomas is safe on the error. An errant throw from the second baseman. That'll bring up Zach Pesson with a man on. Thomas had a good first game of the state tournament, got a pair of hits. Also sacrifice RBI, had three RBIs overall, and two stolen bases. Leading Good hustle. Off of first. There's a strike. Pesson gets the sign from Coach Johnson. Ben Thomas leading off of first. Wide up and the pitch. That was low and uh, Bach. Bach is called. Is that what that was? Uh, it's either a hit by pitch or a, or a hit block. By pitch? Because he pointed to his hand. What was that? I don't know. Home plate umpire is having a difficult time tonight. Oh, the hit by pitch. So the umpire is saying that it hit Pesson on the hand. And actually, if it was a block, I don't think Pesson would uh, get first base. So it had to be hit by a pitch. It would just be Thomas that's allowed to go over to second, but since they gave Pest in the bag, that had to be what it was, and indeed he was hit by the pitch. Is so, my buddy. So now two on, no outs. Lewis Rossi to step in. I think Newton's got the book on Lou. Uh, third baseman's playing in for a bunt. He had a sensational game against Somerset. Three for four and a walk. Runner taking off from second to throw to third. Is going to get into left field. And Thomas is going to be held up at third. Good base coaching by Johnson. If they sent him, he more than likely would have been thrown out. Well, it's always hard when you're a third baseman. You're playing in, you know, thinking bunt, thinking bunt. And the runner from second takes off. So he's out of your peripheral vision. And he had that base swiped easy, but the catcher... Uh, just threw the ball away. Yeah, and that was a terrible throw up to third from Gately. And the runner leading off of first. They're going to try to see if uh, they could get Thomas to come home. And we've seen this before from post 77. They are trying to get them suckered into worrying about the runner at first. And as Thomas comes home, 
he is going to be called out. It took a while for the umpire to signal that he was out. Pesson does advance to second. So Thomas thrown out at home, and I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, that plan, Larry. I think you had no outs, two on. You had and one up. We had Lewis one Rossi at the plate. I mean, don't you have to see what Rossi does before you I do think something so. like that? I think so. The last two times, two or three times they've tried that play. It hasn't gone well. Rossi's going to hit this one up the middle on the ground. Picked up by the shortstop. Throw over to first, and they get the out. Pesson does push up to third. A six to three for Rossi. Two away. Tom Onsi to step in. He's swinging the bat well. He certainly is. Gately deals. Or excuse me, uh, Cocker deals. He doesn't seem to possess a lot of gas on his fastball. The 1 0. Upstairs. Gately caught a long, long game last night. He certainly did. Swinging strike there. Maybe that was part of the uh, reason for sending Thomas the third before, knowing that <laughs> Gately was well worked last night and maybe his uh, throws weren't the best. Swinging strike, Ansi goes down and that will wrap up the second inning. We will head to the third. Newton leading Ashland three to nothing on HCAM television and WACA TV. Lou Top Rossi. of the third inning, Jimmy Hodgson starts things off with a single. As this one is up the left side, that'll get through for a base hit as Thomas Byrne will have the second hit of the inning for post 440. They were aiming for Lou Rossi down there. He was in for a bunt, which would have made sense, but he slashed it down there. Jack Marsjanic, the third hitter in the lineup and second baseman steps in. Top of the order, making things happen for post 440 as that one is fouled into the backstop. In the first inning, Hodgson, who led things off this inning, walked. And then, of course, Mars Janik, the hitter now, had an RBI double to score Hodgson. That was the first run of the game. There's a strike. Nice curveball by Jake Obed. And then Brandon Mignon hit a RBI single to score Mars Janik, followed by a Matt Swain base hit to score Mignon. Fouled off into the parking lot towards Larry's car. Yes. <laughs> Call 1-800-54-GIANT. <laughs> oh, and two. Both runners leading off as this is hit in the air to right field. And it will be caught by Otzi. The runner from second is going to try to advance and will as the throw in is cut off by Hornung. So Hodgson advances on the fly out. That'll bring up Mike Gately, the catcher. Ashland's going to try and spin two. Peel play down to second base. Obed stepped off the back of the rubber and threw to Jackson Horning, telling the umpire he did not tag up, but the umpire waved him safe. That is fouled off. What do you think? Did he tag? I wasn't watching, to be honest. But once you get into the editing room, Tom, you can feel free to slow that down. 
Yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. I thought he tagged, but I wasn't really paying attention to that either. Good block. That one got away from Jouette and allows Byrne to advance. And Jouette did not want to throw up due to the fact that Hodgson is over at third base. Certainly an understandable decision there by Jouette. Now the force is off. So a line drive and somebody not paying attention on the bag. The only way they can double... Double them up. 1-1 one, one, fouled off. That one hit the dumpster behind us. Nobody lives in there, do they? Or the uh, storage container, I should say. <laughs> the 1-2. Hit oh. in the air. A shallow fly ball that will drop into shallow right field. Another run is going to score for, for post 440. An RBI single for Gately. Hardly hard hit. Hodgson comes around. Tom Byrne up to third. Brennan Mignoni will step in. That one low. Gately's not a threat to steal, but they could put on the same play that Ashland tried to put on last inning. Just get yourself in a pickle. There's a strike. One and one. Obid set to deal. Another called strike, one and two. Well, it's been an interesting game, to say the least, so far, Larry. I'll say. That call at first. Up the middle it goes. Slow roller picked up by the second baseman, who tries to flip it over to Hornung. And Hornung was not able to make that catch. And some hesitation by Bates there. Another run did come around to score. As Tom Byrne comes around to score on the error. Well, Gately's and a sacrifice no threat. there for, there would have been a sacrifice, but instead he reached on the error. Well, uh, errors never have help out the pitcher, and this is causing Obid to work his pitch count up. Swain takes a strike. It's now a 5 nothing lead for Newton. There is... Or there may be very soon some warm-up action for Ashland. Thought I saw some post-77 players down there, but it appears to be some fans. Looks like they got the team jackets on. That one is up high. 3-1 to Swain. Outside, draws the walk. Bases are juiced for Newton. Mignone up to second, Gately to third, Swain to first. Henry Bonfont to the plate. Sean Jewell went out to the mound to talk to Jake Opit. He must be uh, hot once again. Yeah, and you wonder if that call in the first inning shook up Obit and Made him struggle a little bit going forward in that inning. And now, of course, he is struggling a bit in this inning. But the error by Ronan Bates certainly didn't help the situation. As this is hit in the air, a high fly ball over to the right side and foul it goes. Ashland's pinched in on the first base and third base side. Cut a ball. Cut a runner down at the plate. It's hit directly at them. All runners leading off the bag. Bases loaded, one out for Newton. So they try to keep this rally going. That one briefly got by Jouette, but he's able to quickly find it. No advancement by the runners. Obid from the stretch, set to deliver the 1-1. One, one. And this is a little bloop shot caught by Rossi. The throw to second, and he will double him up. 
Nice job by Rossi being aware of the situation, looking for the runner that wasn't on base. And he throws it over to second for the double play. And we will head to the bottom of the third, but Newton plates two more and leads five to nothing. Bottom of the third inning, post 77, heading back up to the plate, due up is eight, nine, and one. Sean Jouett, the catcher. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, and Jake Obid, the pitcher. Jewett set to step in. Post 77 needs to get those bats working. They are trailing five to nothing. Two more runs in the top of the inning for post 440. Wind up and the pitch from Coker. There's a strike. As I mentioned to you between innings, Coach Johnson was really hot under the collar and pointing both index fingers towards his head. Certainly can't blame him. Yeah, that was a pretty bad error by Bates. A very uncharacteristic error as well. Bates typically does not make errors like that. And Ashland throughout the season, for the most part, has been a very sound defensive team. Coker deals outside. Did he go around? No, says the first base umpire. Nothing taken from you if you try. One and two. Strike three, got him looking. I'll bring up Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Seymour steps in. There's ball one. Wind up and the pitch. Ball two. That was a good take by Mr. Seymour. Like to have his speed on the base paths. Certainly would. There's a low one. Three straight balls thrown by Coker. Seymour was able to draw a pair of walks in yesterday's victory over Somerset. Also hit a single and scored a pair of runs. Takes a strike there. Three and one. Seymour hit a, only a 200 during the season and 35 at bats. That'll fill up the count. Was able to draw nine walks during the season. And actually really didn't uh, start most, uh, most of the games early on. It was later in the season that he was a pretty much an everyday player in the lineup as he draws the walk there. Jake wants a little payback here. Obid steps in. Seymour leading off of first, that one outside. Gately doesn't have a great arm from behind the plate. Seymour's got good speed. Wind up in the pitch. Upstairs it goes. 2-0. Oh. Obid hit a 268 coming into the state tournament. Le up the left side, takes a hop on the infield grass over to the third baseman, throw across, and that is in time. Five to three goes Obid. Two away. Seymour did move up to second. Ronan Bates to the plate. Bates struggled in yesterday's game. He went 0 for 5 at the plate. He's tailed off. Yeah, he's uh, had a rough patch a little bit here in the state tournament so far. Even the last couple games of the season in the uh, zone playoffs, it's unlike him. Oh, and one. Now, oh, and two. I think they have to plate one here. 
and that calculation will go into Coach Johnson's head. Line up in the pitch. Outside it goes. It got away from Gately. Seymour advances on the wild pitch. So it's now two outs, runner on third. So Coach Johnson's got to decide whether he pulls Jake Obit and goes by reliever by committee with a five to nothing deficit. I think he's going to send Obit back out there. Next inning at least. That one fouled off. There has been no warm-up action as of yet for post-77 that we are aware of. Time called. One and two on Ronan Bates, who struck out his last time up back in the first inning. Outside. Good eye there. Two and two. Set to deal. That one low. Looked awful close to me. Full count on Bates. Fouls that one off. Good battle going on here between Coker and Bates. It's nice to have a nice scoreboard out in right field so you don't have to bring your clicker. Right, Tom? It certainly is and a competent scoreboard operator. <laughs> Up the left side, takes a couple hops, over to the third baseman, throw across, and it is just in time. Five to three goes Bates, and no runs will score for post 77. Newton leading five to nothing on WACA TV and HCAM television in Hopkinton. Top of the fourth inning, eight, nine, and one do up. Rich Alexi, Noah Shelton, and Jimmy Hodgson. There's a strike to the right fielder. Jake Obed out there for another inning of work. Hoping to have more success than he did last inning. That one's fouled away towards us. Uh, nice I've, attempt, I've uh, done Connor. a good amount of games here. Uh, especially back when I used to cover Milford Legion baseball, and that was the closest I've seen a ball to coming in here into the press box. Well, our cameraman. Yeah, our cameraman almost got that one as well. He did make an attempt. I thought he was going to catch it for a moment. That's a base hit all the way. It's fouled off. Can't give him an error for missing that ball. <laughs> oh, and two to Alexi. Wind up and the pitch, outside. One, two pitch. That one low. Weather certainly a, a lot different than it was last night here at Fino. Temperatures have cooled off a little bit. Game started off at about 68 degrees, according to the HCAM Weather Center. Swinging strike for strike number three, and there is one out in the inning. Lexi goes down for his second time by way of the K. That's why he's hitting eight. But uh, Jake uh, Obed started this inning at 64 pitches. Yep, certainly uh, getting up there on the pitch count. There is a threshold, I think, of... 75 requires a certain number of days rest. Now, if the rain can help out, maybe that's the tail end of the tournament time. Called strike there. One and one. That one low. Two and one. Wind up and the pitch. Inside. Three and one count to the third baseman, Noah Shelton. Old Bud took a walk around the back of the uh, mound just for a sec. 
This is up the right side, takes a couple hops on the grass before rolling over to Pesson who will pick it up, step on the bag, two way. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Jimmy Hodgson. One for one, also walked in the first and has scored two runs today. This is the part of the order that has been trouble for Obid. The top of the order for Newton. First pitch is low, 1-0. and oh. I think they're going to ride Jake Obit all the way. There is so. no bull, bullpen activity at all, so. You know, I mean, it's nine inning games. Certainly have to try to roll with your starter as much as you can. Because you do not know what to expect in the games following this one. Last night, post-59, this pitcher went 114 pitches before being yanked. That one is outside, and it is a four-pitch walk to Hodgson. Jimmy Hodgson will reach base for his third time in this game. And that'll bring up Thomas Byrne, who's one for two today. Struck out in the first, singled in the third, and scored a run. And he is going to pop this one up. And it will be caught by Jouette. Was that a bunt there or just a, a little bunt. bit of a swing? So no. we did uh, have the bunt attempt. And that will be the third and final out of the inning. We will head to the bottom of the fourth. Newton leading Ashland 5 to nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. 3, 4, and 5 do up for post 77. Hornung, Ben Thomas, and Zach Pesson. And Hornung... Fouled that one away. It was coming at him, but I think he got a piece of it with the bat, and he did, 0-1. He felt like he was headhunted there. Right. I don't think it was anything intentional from Coker. There's strike two. Oh and 2 Wind up in the pitch. Up the right side, foul. Did Jackson line uh, hit a line drive back to the pitcher his last time up? Yes, he did. That one outside. Wind up in the pitch. There's the ball. Gately didn't ask for help on that one. Two and two. This is popped up, and behind us it goes. In our nice, cozy press box behind home plate. Great view of the wonderful Fino Field as this is hit on the ground. Rolls up the infield grass, throw over by the shortstop, not in time. The speedy Jackson Horning beats it out for the leadoff single. Now that may be the spark that Ashland needed, a leadoff runner. That will bring up Ben Thomas. And that is certainly what you want if, post seven, if you're post 77 to get the speedy Jackson Hornung on the base paths. That one upstairs, 1-0. and oh. This was what uh, Jake Obed wants to see after that controversial call in the first inning. Swing strike on a nasty breaking ball, 1-1. One and one. Coker set to deal, runner leading off of first. That one inside and high. Two and one. I don't know whether Coker has a pickoff move. He hasn't shown it yet. Maybe he hasn't felt as though he had to. Upstairs. A little life in the Ashland dugout now. Yeah, and I think they need uh, some life. They've been pretty quiet so far tonight. Wind up and the pitch. Inside it goes, and that is ball four to Ben Thomas. 
Two on, no outs. Warnung moves up to second. Zach Peston to the plate. Johnson going to uh, sacrifice Peston here to move the runners and uh, two runners in the scoring position. We shall see. I'm giving him the green light to swing away. Try to get the rally going. Oh, and one. Set to deal to Pesson. And he puts this one up the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Hornung. He comes around to score. And Ben Thomas up to third. It's an RBI double for Zach Pesson. There is some life in that Ashland dugout. Still no outs in the inning, and it is a 5-1 to one ball game. And this is just what the doctor ordered for Ashland post-77. Lewis Rossi will step in, and just like that, post-77 has life. Well, yesterday tried a suicide squeeze. Rossi's been known to drop a bunt down. As this is up the middle, it takes a couple hops on the grass, throw over by the second baseman in time, but a run scores. Ben Thomas comes around to score the second post-77 run on the sacrifice RBI ground out by Lewis Rossi. Tom Onzi had a tough at bat his last time to the plate. Moving up to third is Zach Pesson. Now, Tom Onzi in the game against Andover missed the sign, but bunt put a perfect bunt up the first base line, which played it a run, the first run of the game. And now you have to wonder, uh, Larry, if Brian Coker is maybe getting a little bit tired out there. He's thrown quite a few pitches as well. Onzi swings at that one and fouls it off into the catcher. Well, I would think that uh, if this was a must-have, must-have for Newton, they would have had Mignoni start, but I have a feeling he uh, he went above his pitch count in the last game they played against Waltham. That was a good curveball by Coker. Yeah, straight call. Coker looks at third and deals a breaking pitch. Onsi will hit a little bloop shot back to Coker, who's going to throw it away over the first baseman's head. It goes, and Zach Pesson has scored the third post-77 run of the night. Wow. That is a bad error if you're Newton. Well, he was doing postal service there. He, I think it was airmail. What was that? But post-77 will take it. Hope our cameraman got that ball, but took off like a jetliner. Sean Jouette steps in. There's the bunt up the third base side and foul. A routine, well, what should have been a routine play to end the inning turns into another post-77 run. And let's, and let's not forget, you still, uh, or that would have been the, Second out. Let's not forget you still have a runner over at second base. Yeah, Jewett uh, bunt attempt there was the equivalent of a drag bunt for a righty. Strike two on him. The 0-2 count on Jewett. He'll step out to adjust his batting gloves. Five to three score, Newton leading Ashland, but post 77 trying to continue this rally. One out in the inning, runner on second. Swinging strike, and that'll be out number two. Brad Seymour will step in. Seymour walked his last time up, last inning. Newton's middle infielders are very aggressive at trying to keep the runner close to second base. I 
I think they know how much speed this post 77 lineup has and how much they like to cause havoc on the base paths. The 1 0 pitch in there for a strike, 1 and 1. Obid on deck, chomping at the bit. Coker looks at second and is set to deal. Runner taking off to throw over to third. And it is not going to be in time. They give Ansu the stolen base. That was a close one. Look for the Newton manager to come out on that one and ask for an explanation. That was a close, close play. You're um, post 77, though. You, you, uh, you'll take you it. deserve that after I yeah, uh, called back in the first inning. I hope you get that on replay. That pitch is in there for a called strike, two and two on Seymour. For Jake all Obed, former. the leadoff hitter, do up next. Up the third base side, and that is gloved by the third baseman. The throw across is a tough one. It's not in time. It got away from the first baseman. A run already in for post 77. It's a five to four ball game. I'm you giving that a single. That was a tough throw to make. He should get a, an extra bag on that one. Right, it did get of, away. Out of play. Jake Obed will step in. Five to four. Welcome back, post 77. James Greeley, the manager, is going out to talk to Coker. Yep, try to settle his pitcher down. And this has to be tough for Coker. That is uh, another play that you thought was going to be an out. Instead, it gets by the first baseman, turns into a run. Well, payback is a... Is uh, loving it. Well, I can't say this is a family-friendly station, but rhymes with itch. <laughs> Runner leading off of first. Taking off over to second to throw up is not in time. A stolen base for Seymour, and I think Seymour did beat that out. That is a good call there by the umpire. And the coach for Newton doesn't like it at all. James Greeley's going to argue that one. Wow. <laughs> Let's play that play in the first inning by looping it. For all of our I, I thought the, umpires, I thought the call at, at home. third base was a lot closer than I know, that but one. We can loop that play in the first inning, and all of our umpires that are home can uh, decide whether that was a interference by the runner. Well, post seventy seven has responded. Runner leading off of second, the lineup and the pitch. Down low, briefly got away from the catcher. The throw to third is not in time. The speedy Seymour beats it out. It was a good throw, but Seymour, so much speed. Johnson is animated down at the third base coach's box. Runner on third, two outs, four runs in in this inning. That pitch outside. Almost got away from Gately. Three and O count on Obid. Hit in the air, up the left side, it goes foul. Three and one. Obid was trying to crush that ball. He's, he's angry. He's still hot over that play in the first inning. Coker deals. Up the first base side, past the reach of the first baseman. Fair ball. The game is tied as Seymour comes around to score. Obin still going over to second base. He's loving it. Five to five. So are his teammates. They're all. And we're going to have time called so Obid can give over his pad. And you could tell uh, Obid wanted that more than anything. An RBI base hit drives in Seymour. Coach Johnson is still animated over there. 
Bates steps into the batter's box, trying to keep this rally going. He needs 077 a hit. has batted around. That pitch low. I'm sorry to step on you, but he needs a hit like oxygen. Yeah, he certainly does. He is 0 for 7 in this tournament. Wind up and the pitch. And I'm seeing fireworks going off over in right field. You're safe with me around here, <laughs> Tom. Well, there's actual fireworks off in right field, but post 77 has the fireworks right now in this inning. Because that one's fouled away. Two and one. Milford. Yeah, Milford's finest is on it. So the police driving by up the street. Runner leading off of second. Wind up and the pitch from Coker. Inside. Surprisingly, no warm-up action yet for post 440, at least that I have seen. Maybe they're going to go with what they have, and 77 is going to go with what they have. But Three and one count. And that's going to hit them. Yep, the wear it, the we got ice. Take one for the team chant is going on in that Ashland dugout. I bet you money. Post 77 has batted around. Jackson Horning uh, step in for the second time this inning. He's in the three spot for a reason. Five tool player, Jackson Horning. Certainly is. And this is a dangerous part of the order to be facing right now if you're post 440. Gonna go. Wind up in the pitch, outside. 1-0. What a turn of events here tonight at Fino Field. This game has had all kinds of suspense. Up the third base side, past the reach of the third baseman. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Obed, the throw in is off the mark. Obed scores. He didn't, the catcher did not give him a lane. And Obed is loving it. The catcher was looking for interference. Payback. But he did not give Obed a path to home plate as he should. And all is well as Jackson Horning over at second base after driving in the lead run. Ronan Bates up to third. It is a single for Hornung, who advanced to second on the throw. Ben Thomas to step to the plate. 6-5, so post-77. Some unusual calls there that the home plate umpires had to make. Yeah, he's had a uh, tough night over there uh, behind home plate. He's had to make some very tough calls. Jake's a tough kid, good-sized kid, but he was going to knock Gately over, that's for sure. Runners on second and third still, and that's fouled away by the cleanup man. Thomas is... 0 for 1 today, but did reach on an error in the second and walked in the fourth and scored a run. He's also stolen a base today. And the runner is off second, so was way off, taking a huge lead. So Coker checks in on second, and the runner slides back. Now, if you're post 77, you got your cleanup man at the plate, two on. Keep this rally going. Don't get thrown out on the base paths. Who called time? I believe it, it might have been an official's timeout there. Coker set the deal. Runner once again, Jackson Horning with a big lead off of second. There's a called strike. 0 and 2 now on Ben Thomas. Nice curveball by post 440 pitcher. What a fourth inning this has been. Outside. Coker's got to be tiring. He's thrown at least 30 pitches this inning, I'd venture to guess. I would be surprised if it wasn't more than that. And I can't believe Newton has no warm-up action whatsoever. Up the left side, and that takes an awkward hop past the third baseman. It goes. Bates around to score. And it is 7-5, post 77. The throw over to second to try to get Thomas from the catcher is going to be dropped by the second baseman. The throw was on the mark and would have been in time, but the second baseman could not hold on. 
Oh, my RBI goodness. single for Ben Thomas. I have not seen that 77 team that animated. Everybody came out of the dugout. They smell blood. You got Horning down at third with a big lead. Zach Pesson steps in. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Left that curveball. Most it, kids at this level will stay away from the curveball. A seven run fourth inning for post 77. Wrap your head around that one. Outside. Do not leave your couch, ladies and gentlemen. Wait for the half inning break to get some libation or a snack. Line up and the pitch. Up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop. No catch, throw over to first in time. And finally, the inning will end, but not before post 77, plate seven. And they lead as we will head to the fifth. It is Ashland post 77, seven. Newton post 445. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Top of the fifth inning, three, four, and five due up for Newton. As this is ripped up the left side, that gets through for a base hit. And Jack Mars Janik, the second baseman, starts off the fifth with a leadoff single off of Obid. It'll bring up Mike Gately, the catcher. Post 77 had a seven run fourth inning. Extremely impressive. Jake Obit and the home plate umpire met between the mound and home plate. Had a little conversation about that play at the plate. Runner leading off of first. Obit set to deal. Up the third base side, picked up by Rossi. Throw to second, and they will get the lead runner. And you could tell Rossi's been practicing on those grounders up the line. Yeah, he, he was um, plagued by the yips over there for a couple of games. So Gately reaches on the 5-3 to three force out. And now Brendan Mignoni, the... First baseman steps in, takes that one low. Gately won't be moving whatsoever. We'll try to recap the craziness in the bottom of the fourth for you. But this game has taken a huge turn, to say the least. That one followed into the backstop. Nice curveball. It all started with a Jackson Horning single to start off the bottom of the fourth. Ben Thomas then walked, an RBI double from Pesson drove in Horning. And then a sacrifice ground out by Ross. He scored the second post-77 run as Thomas came around. And then Tom Onsi reached on an errant throw from the pitcher over to first base. That scored another run. Sean Jouette then struck out. And then Seymour ripped a RBI base hit as this is up the left side and will land in a left field for the single. Two on, one out. And that will bring up Matt Swain, the left fielder. Following the crushed. Seymour base hit, it was another RBI base hit from Jackson Hornung, and then Ben Thomas followed up with another RBI base hit, and then Peston grounded out to end the inning. But seven runs, four post 77. But right now it's two on for Newton and one out as they are trying to respond. Popped up right side, foul territory, out of play it goes. Into the bleachers. Good hustle by Pesson, Obed, and Jewett. All converging on that play. Jake should, should save his energy. Swain steps back in. From the stretches, Obed. Both runners leading. He deals. Fouled into the backstop. Bon and Font do up next for Newton. This game far from over, Larry. Absolutely. And Newton does finally have some warm-up action. Up the third base side. What a catch by Rossi. He'll step on the third base back for one. The throw across, not in time. But Rossi flashing the leather for out number two. Everything seems to be going 440, uh, excuse me, 77's way. 
That's a web gem uh, candidate right there. Absolutely. Once that gets in the editing room, we got to see that in slow motion. He picked it. Bonin Font steps in. 0 for 2 tonight. Obid set to deal. We got to talk about the pitch count. Heading into the fourth, it was Coker with 48 pitches, Obid with 64. It's now Coker with 93, Obid with 81 heading into this inning. And I think that shows you how the uh, fourth went for Coker, as that is going to be a three unassisted ground out for the third out of the inning. And we will head to the bottom of the fifth, post 77, leading Newton 7 to 5. Bottom of the fifth inning, post 77, trying to continue the magic from the bottom of the fourth. Lewis Rossi to start things off. Coker is back out there for another inning of work. We'll see if he settles down this inning. First pitch was a strike. As this is going to take a couple of hops on the grass, picked up by the second baseman, throw over, and four to three goes Rossi. You mean Brooks Robinson, right? <laughs> We'll bring up Tom Onsey. Tom Onsey from Hopkinton. His mom, Nicole, his dad, Doug, here in attendance. And as far as other Ashland fans, well, that one fouled away. I don't, how do we get more fans out here from Ashland? They're only two towns away. I don't know. And that is dropped by the shortstop. Ansi is going to reach for the second time on an error. And that is another rough error. My post 440. That's the fourth error of the game for Newton. Line up in the pitch, and that is going to hit Juet. Second hit batter of the game from Coker. Ansi up to second, Juet over to first. And did the umpire just give him a warning there? No, I don't I don't think so. Greeley is gonna come yep. out anyway, Here but comes Greeley. I think uh Anzi yeah. made a really great base running uh, uh play, which you rarely see at this level. He ran down the first base line, even though the shortstop had the ball, and he put the brakes on about three steps after going through the bag and turned to his right to see if there was gonna be an overthrow. And usually you see at this level, kids running through the bag and heading 15 feet down. And there goes Coker. Well, we are going to have a pitching change for Newton post 440. And I'd say at this point, a well needed one. So with that, we will take a timeout. Ashland leading Newton seven to five in state tournament baseball action. Continuing on with the bottom of the fifth inning, we have a pitching change. Richard Alexi moves over from right field and takes over on the mound. Jack Marsjanik moves over from second base to take over in right field. That pitch is outside to Brad Seymour. And then over at second base, we believe it's Michael Banks, but we'll have to get a confirmation on that. He got eight, his eight warm-up pitches, and that was it. Line up in the pitch. There's a cold strike. For those of you just joining us, you are missing some very fun baseball, especially if you're a post-77 fan, as there's a swinging strike. Ashland put up seven runs in the bottom of the fourth. They were trailing five to nothing going in to the bottom of the fourth. But of course now leads seven to five and trying to add on more here in this bottom of the fifth. Two on, one out. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklett on the call, Connor Donovan on camera on a beautiful night at Fino Field in Milford. It is American Legion Baseball State Tournament action. Alexi set to deal. Outside it goes. Two and two is the count. Tom, I haven't seen the Ashland 
players that animated all season long. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, but a called strike. Out number two. Seymour didn't like it, but here comes Jake Obed. And maybe Ashley realizes since they've never been to this tournament before, they're going to take advantage of it. Have right. some fun. Absolutely. How can you not? Oh, Obed wants to launch one. Wind up in the pitch up the right side. That's going to trickle through for a base hit. Lead runner being waved around to throw in is going to be not in time. Ansi scores and will throw up to second. Obed safe. And it's an 8 5 ball game. Jake Obed taking out his frustrations on the field. And he gets his second RBI base hit of the game. We'll bring up Ronan Bates. Juet up to third. I smell some good cooking for Mr. Bates. Runners leading off second and third. Alexi set to deal. Inside. Good One take by Ronan. Bottom of the fifth inning, an 8-5 Ashland lead. Leg lift and the pitch. That one low. After that 16 burger that uh, Ashland put on Somerset, you had eight. That's 24 runs in two games. I don't mind, do you, Tom? I like it. Two outs, two on. And this is a very slow roller up the grass. No one's going to get to it in time. And another post-77 run's going to score. The throw home, and they have Obit in a pickle. He runs out of the base paths, and he's out. I think he uh, tried to do a little bit too much with that there, but why not try to keep the momentum going? But no harm, no foul, as another post-77 run does score. And we will head to the top half of the sixth with Ashland leading Newton nine to five. Top of the sixth inning, a nine to five lead now for Ashland post 77. Eight, nine and one due up for Newton. Rich Alexi, who started the game in right field, now pitching, steps into the batter's box to face Jake Obed. Wind up and the pitch, fouled off, 0 and one. I got you covered, I got you covered. I think it's still an O'Leary warming up in the post-77 bullpen. And we got word that the Newton second baseman is now Willie Hodgson, as there's a sw swinging strike. Got the Hodgson brothers up the middle. Nice to see Coach Matt Anderson from the Northeast Longhorns down here. Swing looking at his pro there. protégés. There's out number one. That'll bring up Noah Shelton. System pitch is a head pitching coach for Hopkins and High. Runs a, runs a nice academy out of Holliston. Well, you couldn't ask for better weather tonight for baseball. So why not get down here to Fino? There's a strike. Oh and one. Obid deals, fouled off. He knows this may be his last inning, so he's going to let everything out of the hose. Set to deliver. Leg lift and the pitch outside. One and two. I should have brought my pillow to the game. Strike three, got him looking. Obid feeling it at the plate, feeling it on the mound. And racking up the Ks. A little Jimmy helmet Hodgson, throwing on. The shortstop will step in. Looks like there's gonna be some helmet throwing from that last batter. Newton certainly must be frustrated by now. Six Ks in this game for Obid. Strike one there to Hodgson. He's been a little pest today, Hodgson. 
up the third base side and takes a couple hops on the grass. Picked up by Rossi. Throw to first. Not a problem. Five to three goes Hodgson. And one, two, three goes Newton post 440. In the top of the sixth to the bottom of the inning we go. Ashland leading nine to five on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, three, four, and five due up for post 77. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, steps in to face Richard Alexi. Alexi in his second inning of work. And this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman off the hop and throw to first, no problem. Four to three on the out. And we'll bring up Ben Thomas, the cleanup hitter. He's having a pretty good night. One for two at the plate. Did reach on an error. Walked and scored a run as well. Also has an RBI to his credit. It's a big gap in right center field right now. Swinging strike there. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled off. Set to deal. Breaking ball up high. That had absolutely no snap to it. One and two count on the cleanup man. Swinging strike, and he got him two away. Alexi has been in the game since coming in after Jouette was hit by a pitch in the fifth. And despite two runs scoring during his outing, they were both credited to Coker. So Coker gave up nine runs officially. We'll have to go back and see how many earned runs that was. I believe it was seven earned runs. The ball fouled back by Pesson. I think uh, Coach Johnson's going to send Obed back out there, given the short inning. And okay. Pesson takes one on the arm for the team, takes first base. Larry taking over on play-by-play -play for a minute there. I, <laughs> I thought you were sleeping. <laughs> oh, I can't sleep during this. You kidding me? A lot Ross of runs. Will step in. A lot of runs in the last two days. Absolutely. A lot of action to call, to say the least. Runner on first, two outs, check in, runner back safe. Almost thrown away. I will take you to Wendy's tonight after the game for one of those Baconator sandwiches. From the stretch is Alexi. He deals. There's a swinging strike. Big hack by Rossi. Checking at first, runner back safe. Once again, almost thrown away. The thing I like most about this post-77 team is they are always hungry to score more runs. They are not going to settle ever. That one inside, little chin music. One and one. Rossi is 0 for 2, but also has a sacrifice RBI ground out. That came in the seven run, bottom of the fourth. There's a called strike, one and two. For those of you watching on WACA, you had to get your fannies down here and watch some good baseball action. I agree, that one low, two and two. Or H cam, I think everybody should get down here. Got to make a better show in baseball. Than this. It doesn't get any better than this. Line up and the pitch. Runner taking off from first, but he'll have to go back because that one's fouled away. He's a tough out, Lewis Rossi. Certainly is. The battles pest. every at bat. Batted at 323 coming into the state tournament. 452 on base percentage. Impressive numbers. You never know where he's going to hit that ball. Checking at first, runner back safe. 
standing. And one of these times, he's going to throw that ball away. Newton can't afford to give up another run. Louis Rossi, uh, one of the 11 Holliston High Schoolers on this team, will take strike three there. And that is going to wrap up the bottom of the sixth with post 77 leading nine to five as we head to the top of the seventh. Top of the seventh inning, two, three, and four do up for Newton. Thomas Byrne, Jack Marsjanic, and Mike Gately to step in to face Jake Obed, who's out there battling into the seventh inning. He's got 100 pitches. There's a swinging strike. Seems to be getting stronger as the game gets longer. He certainly does. He deals outside. One and one. You're a mathematician, are you, Tom? Uh, it depends. Aside from that one stressful inning he had. And this is a slow roller up the middle, but picked up by Obed, no problem. One to three, four out, number one. Six divided in 100, so what, 15 per inning? Jack Marsjanic will step in. I don't know, 1.9. I don't exactly know what stat you're trying to add there. Is that one's low? Pitches per inning. That's Oh, that's uh, about 19. Okay. Wind up and the pitch. You minus out that There's really rough first inning. He hasn't had too, many, too much stress, and he's keeping it under 15 pitches an inning. So that's really good. That yeah, certainly is. Been, yeah, since the first inning, really, it's... Been uh, pretty well for Jake Obit out there on the mound. And let's not forget, a couple of the runs did score unearned. One and two. Yeah. And there's out number two. Jake Obit is really throwing. He's throwing gas now. It seems his velocity it's has personal. gone up these It's last personal now. Innings. You got to get an interview with. Jake Obit after the game, and it, I'll bet you he said it was personal. Oh, I'm sure he did. Post 77 trying to stay in the winner's bracket. And they're a couple innings away from doing so. Up nine to five here in game two of the state tournament as there is a strike to the cleanup man, catcher Mike Gately. One and one. For you math mathematicians at home who already figured out what Right off the end of the bat. 16.666 pitches per inning. You minus out that first inning where you throw a lot of pitches. He's been pretty efficient. Not too bad. This is hit high in the air, a shallow pop-up foul territory, and it is caught for the third out of the inning as the first baseman, Zach Pesson, ranges over to make the catch, and that will do it. For the top half of the seventh to the bottom of the inning we go. Ashland leading Newton nine to five. Tom Otzi to start things off for post 77 here in the seventh. All kinds of defensive changes for Newton post 440, including a new pitcher. Thomas Byrne has moved in from center field to take over. He's the third pitcher of the night for post 440. And we'll see how he fares against Tom Otzi, who follows that one away. And then in the outfield, we got Jack Marsjanic in left field. He started the game at second base. And then in, in center field, it's Matt Swain, who started the game in left field. So that one got by the catcher. Billy Hodgson remains in the game at second base. Well, Tom, I understand there's a hard stop on a pitch count at 120. Obid's up to 111. So does Coach Johnson give Dylan O'Leary a clean inning? Slow hit ball. 
That takes a couple hops, picked up by the shortstop, and he will get the throw over in time. Six to three for Ansi. Uh, I think I think you let Obid uh, throw those nine pitches. Rest your relievers as much as you can. But either decision uh, is understandable. As Jouette swings at that one and a foul tip, 0-1. Post 77 is able to close this one out. They will be back here tomorrow night for a 7.30 p.m. start time, of course, as long as the weather cooperates. Up the third base side, takes a couple hops, picked up by Shelton, throw over, and they get him two-way. Brad Seymour to step in. Number nine hitter. Seymour having a good night at the plate, one for two. Also walked and has an RBI and a run scored. We'll have some warm up action for post 77. Wind up and the pitch. That is low. It's Tim Ringy getting loose. Uh, he pitched yesterday, so I'm not sure whether he went over his limit. Number 20. Wind up and the pitch outside. Gets away from Gately again. I'm wondering whether they would send Jake o Obit out to the outfield. He's an excellent defender. There's a called strike, two and one. Yeah, I don't think Obit's coming out of this game. I think he'll probably stay in somewhere in the outfield, unless uh, maybe they want to rest him, but I doubt he wants to come out of this game. Three and one on Seymour. It's very possible that either Ansi or Seymour comes out of the game. They move Thomas over to right, I have a feeling, and put Obit in his natural position. Seymour draws the walk, a 2-0 walk. They'll bring up Jake Obid. Uh, he's happier than, uh, well, he's just a hap happy kid right now. This game started, uh, started off not looking well for post-77 at all, but wow, what a turn of events we have seen throughout the course of the evening. Brad Seymour is getting a tremendous lead over there, and he hasn't even seen the move. The 1-0 pitch. Obid swings at that one and fouls it away. One and one on the pitcher. He's two for four at the plate. A couple RBIs and a run scored. That one is inside. He thought he got hit, but the umpire says, no, you didn't. Two and one. I thought that might have nicked his jersey. but I, I did, too. I heard something. And it wasn't the bat. Obi didn't even argue it, though. He's fine uh, continuing to hit. Runner taking off from first to throw up. Not in time and off the mark. Seymour with a stolen base. That's his second stolen bag of the game. I was just going to say, does... Coach Johnson gave up Seymour and have Obid lead off the next inning. Well, yeah, really, in that scenario, you can't lose. And there's ball four. Obid drawing the walk. Ronan Bates will step in. Wind up in the pitch, check swing, and their strike. Ronan is off to University of Massachusetts in Lowell. Oh, and one on Bates. May try to lock, walk on. That one low gets by the catcher. Runner from second advances, and so does the runner from first. A wild pitch allows Seymour to head over to third. Obid follows suit. One and one on Bates, who broke his 0 for 6 slump today in his last at bat. 
in the fifth inning, had an RBI single that scored Sean Jouette, and that was the ninth post-77 run of the evening. That one low. Three and one. Byrne is struggling here in the seventh. Mightily. And Coach Greeley might be playing the long game here because he's got uh, Mignoni uh, available, but he didn't start tonight's game. And Coach Johnson also playing the long game. Byrne deals this is hit high in the air to left field. Fair territory and caught by Mars Janik. And that is going to be the final out of the bottom of the seventh. And we will head to the top of the eighth. Ashland leading Newton nine to five. Top of the eighth inning, five, six, and seven do up for Newton. Ben and Mignoni will start things off, the first baseman. He is two for three. Pair of singles, reach on an error, pair of RBIs, and a run scored. Follows that one into the backstop. Jake Obid back out there in the eighth inning. He has not given up a run since the third. Newton's being very aggressive at the plate. There's... Ball one, one and one. If Obit can uh, get through a couple hitters. And this is sliced into center field, a leadoff single for Mignoni, who's been a pest all night for Obit. He'll bring up Matt Swain. They're going through a lot of eggs tonight, uh, Tom. Maybe 10 or are. 15 eggs a game. A lot of uh, contact being made. Obid checks in at first, runner slides back safe. Anything hit to our left in foul territory, you can forget about that ball. Obid set to deal. There's a ball. Runner leading off the first base bag. Obid deals. That one is low. Two and O. Oh. Well, post 77 has gotten a couple pitchers loose. We'll see how long Obid stays in there, but this one's up the third base side. That's a fair ball. And the lead runner, Mignoni, going to keep going to third, and he will be safe. That one took a long roll up the left side. So that is going to mean that there are two runners in scoring position with no outs. And Henry Bonenfight was due up, but we are going to have a pinch hitter. TJ Goldblatt will step in. He pitched last night in the victory over Milford. Actually, according to... Uh, the program, Coker, who's nine, but he's, Coker's actually 17. Wind up and the pitch. This one's popped up and fouled off. Came but uh, pitched very well last night in relief of Rodney O'Connor. And we have a stoppage here. Question is whether he can finish this batter or he's going to have a hard stop. He's at 119. I'm hearing down there. So this might be his last pitch right here. And it's a strike. He is going to stay in. One and two. Leg lift and the pitch, fouled off. And that is a fair ball, at least they thought. But then the home plate ump says Ju it's foul. Jewett might be a little shaken up. I think he took one on the mask. That was foul. I don't know what the uh, debate was there. Yeah, they're going to check in on Jewett. Hopefully he's okay. 
Seems to be all right. Umpire courtesy, the trainer. And he's checking out the baseball now. The umpire looking at the baseball. And uh, the Newton coach, James Greeley, not liking the call of a foul ball there. Well, I'll go back to the first inning and the runner's interference, and he can't argue anything tonight. I, I don't know uh, why it was thought that that was a fair ball initially. I'm not sure what it hit. Obviously, it was something on the front of the hitter. Maybe he thought it hit the dirt just in front of home plate. Well, he called it a foul ball, and that's what I saw. Obid, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is walking with a little bit of a limp there. He's got to be gassed. But he went to tend to Jewett, yep. his battery mate, there to make sure he was okay. The umpires are talking something over here. Foul ball. Yep, they're going to have a conference and go with the foul ball call. One and two. On Bon and Font. This game is not over yet. This Newton lineup, if they can put together a rally, and they have two on with no outs right now. Obid set to deal. And there's a ball. Two and two. Obid knows this is his last hitter, absolutely. It has so to be. He's going to let loose. That one low, full count. He's struggling. He's uh, starting to get tired now. Jonathan Pesson really was warming up in the bullpen. If I'm counting correctly, he's at 125 now. There's strike three. Got him. And he is going to walk right over towards the post 77 bench. They're bringing in Anzi. They're switching Ben Thomas over to right field and Jake Obid. Not done for the evening. He's going to take over in left field. But first, uh, let's see what's going on here. They might be going over the lineup, and the Newton coach, James Greeley, getting a warning from the uh, home plate umpire. Yeah, they're going to talk about the lineup with the umpire. We'll take a timeout, and then we'll get you updated on all the changes. It's the top of the eighth. Ashland post 77 leading Newton in state tournament Legion baseball action here at Fino Field in Milford, 9-5. Oh, it was eight. Back to top of the eighth action. New pitcher, four post 77. Dylan O'Leary takes over for Jake Ovid. As Rich Alexi steps in, and that one is going to get by Jouette. A run is going to come home to score. And Mignone will make it a nine to six ball game on the wild pitch. Up to third is Swain. This game is not over yet, Larry. One out, runner on third. Dylan O'Leary deals. There's a strike. I had a talk with Dylan's father the other day at the Andover game. I mentioned that Dylan has to repeat what works. Right. That one low. For those of you just joining us, it has been one exciting game here at Fino Field. And that one going to get by Jouette. Took an awkward bounce in front of him, and another run scores. I'm giving that one a pass ball. It is now 9-7. to seven. And just like that, Newton's within two. You're tuned into Ashland Legion Baseball State Tournament action. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklett on the call as head coach Derek Johnson going to have a talk with Dylan O'Leary to try to settle him down. And now Sean Jouette will come out as well. They do have Tim Ringy loose as well. And I think the leash is gonna be really short with O'Leary if he continues to struggle. Well, there are five outs left for post 440. We'll get you the line on Jake Obit after this pitch. Line up and the pitch, fouled off. Obit went seven and a third. 
giving up five runs, four of which were earned, eight hits, and eight strikeouts. For Jake Obed, fouled into the backstop there. That'll fill up the count. Now Coach Johnson really wants O'Leary to at least battle through this eighth inning. That one's fouled away. He is going to send, it looks like. Jonathan Pesson. Yeah, Jonathan Pesson, and I believe Ringy was also with him. Alexi is 0 for 3 tonight. That's it. Oh. And that is going to be ball four, according to the home plate umpire. Puts runners on the corners. O'Leary oh, was really me, animated. First, as both runners that reach base this inning scored on wild pitches. Noah Shelton steps in. That one outside. One and O oh on the third baseman. One on, one out, two in. Nine to seven lead for Ashland. That is outside. Two and O, oh, O'Leary is struggling. And that ball four call might have gotten his head as he thought that was a strike all the way. Three and O, oh, that one inside. He's got good defense behind it, Dillon. Top of the order coming up for Newton. Pending a double play here. And Shelton will reach via the walk. Two straight walks for O'Leary. Alexi up to second. Shelton to first. Jimmy Hodgson, the shortstop to the plate. I don't know if I'm leaving O'Leary in for this hitter. But they are going to roll with him. That one outside. When he's on, he's on. When he's off. Heels outside there, 2-0. Oh. He yanked that pitch. Duet going to have a discussion with O'Leary, try to settle him down. Coach Johnson is going over to the warm-up area to see if anyone's ready to go. Duet will do a slow walk back behind home plate. He's just a really bright kid, Sean Jewett. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. Two now and repeat one. That. Repeat that, Dylan. He deals. And this is hit in the air to right field, and it is caught. Runner from second is going to tag and head to third and he will be successful in doing so. They but did he tag? And no, he did it! It's a double play! Great heads up baseball by Ronan Bates, realizing the runner did not tag, steps on second base and gets the out. And that is <laughs> a great momentum shift towards post 77. We will head to the bottom of the eighth. Ashland leading Newton. 9 to 7 on WACA TV and HCAM. Bottom of the eighth inning, Jackson Horning, the shortstop, steps in. It is a 9 to 7 ball game after Newton gets two back in the top of the inning. But the rally was shut down by a double play, a fly out to center field, and then Bates able to catch the runner that. Took off to third base, not tagging up, and he was out as Bates stepped on the bag. And now Hornung takes one for the team and will head down to first base. Manager Greeley going out there. If 77 can play a couple of runs, they'll have some breathing room. The umpire's uh, talking with the pitcher, and we're going to have a new pitcher. This is going to be the fourth pitcher of the game for Newton. Looks like Burns going to stay in the game and head back to the outfield. And who do we have pitching now? Number 22. We'll get you the details and all the changes for Newton when we get back after this short break. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV and HCAM. 
fourth pitcher of the game for Newton post 440. It's Jimmy Hodgson moving over to take over on the mound. And he will deliver strike one to Ben Thomas. Hodgson started the game at shortstop. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. The new shortstop is Jack Marsjanic, who is now at his third position of the game. Started at second base, went to left field, now at short. Wind up and the pitch to Thomas, and that one is low. One Checked. and one on Thomas. Runner on first, no outs. Post 77 would love some insurance. That one low. That looked awful good, Tom. Jackson is uh, checking at first. Runner slides back. Got in the head of Hodgson a little bit. He made a hard break for second base and put on the brakes. Previous pitch to that. He deals. Swing strike. Catcher threatening a throw down to first. Two and two. You might see ghosts out of his uh, peripheral vision. Right. With Jackson. Hodgson deals. Swinging strike. There's out number one. That'll bring up Zach Pesson. Newton will be down to their final three outs. After post 77 gets done here in the bottom of the eighth. They'll have to score at least two to keep this game going. There's a strike. But Ashland will have the, the last say should they tie it up. We'll go ahead. That one outside briefly got away from Gately. But he recovers nicely. One and one. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. Hodgson was after, not available yesterday. Due up after Pesson is Lewis Rossi. That one outside, two and one. Pesson has been hit by a pitch twice today. Had an RBI double in the fourth as part of that seven run bottom of the fourth. And he is grounded out. Takes one low there. Three and one now. I would send Jackson on this three and one pitch. Fouled into the backstop. That's why I'm not the coach, Tom. From the stretch. That is fouled off. Well, no matter how this game ends, Newton has had to really dig in to their bullpen. And it will take a toll on the Newton pitching staff. Line up in the pitch. Up the left side, picked up by the third baseman, the throw to first, and they got him. And now the runner from second taking off for third. He's safe. Jackson Hornung able to slide in there and take advantage of the situation. He didn't even stop. Six to three ground out for Pesson, two outs. Runner on third, Lewis Rossi to the plate. I like this matchup, Tom. Absolutely. He's been known to do some crazy things like lay a bunt down the third baseline with Jackson Horning over there. And we'll follow that into the backstop. Rossi is 0 for three today, but has a sacrifice RBI ground out. I'd say he is due for a hit. Checking at third, and the runner is picked off. He's going to head home. The third baseman bobbled the ball. The throw to the plate is going to be off the mark. The catcher could not lay the tag on Hornung, and it's another post-77 run. 10-7, Ashland. Jackson Hornung stealing home. Why not? <laughs> Seen everything. And 
this post-77 team continuing to show off the wheels on the base paths. Now one inside, one and one. Wind up and the pitch, outside. He deals up the middle, gloved by the pitcher. Hodgson, he'll get it over to first, and that will be the final out of the bottom of the eighth, but not before post 77 scores one more. It's 10 to 7, heading to the top of the ninth on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the ninth, Newton down to their final three outs. Dylan O'Leary out there for his second inning of relief. Delivers the first pitch up high to Byrne. He came in in relief while the eighth was in progress. And the inning ended after two more Newton runs scored, but it ended on a double play, which was a huge momentum boost as this bunt is a slow roller up the middle and the throw off the mark gets by the first baseman. And Byrne is going to head over to second base. And he will get one on the overthrow. Runner on second, no outs. Game not over yet. Jack Marsjanic to step in. Actually, we might, yep, it will be Marsjanic. So Byrne reaches on the error. That one outside. You know CPR, Tom? <laughs> it's getting a little tight. It certainly is. There's a strike. First error of the game for Ashland. Well, this game has had all the suspense you could ask for for both of these teams. Up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, not a problem. Six to three goes Margenic. One, one away, on. one on. Hornung froze the runner at second base, so he couldn't go anywhere, or he would have been dead meat at third base. Mike Gately steps in. The catcher having a pretty good day at the plate. We'll send this one into center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Byrne is going to be waved around third and will easily score Newton's eighth run of the night. An RBI single for Gately. Tying run coming to the plate. Here comes Derek Johnson. Yeah, I think if you're uh, Coach Johnson, you need to think about pulling old Larry here. Let's see if he takes the baseball. You might leave him out there. Well, just a discussion at the moment. I can't imagine, even if he does leave him out there for this next hitter, that the leash is going to be much longer. This is a game now that you really have to take. This could make or break your state tournament. I wonder what Jake Obit is thinking about out there in left field. Right. Yeah, Jake Obit did stay in the game and move to the outfield as expected. Is this a pinch hitter? Brendan Mignon steps oh. in. And he will follow that one away. Mignon is three for four today. Got a little stinger there. Scored a pair of runs as well and has an RBI. Gately no threat to steal. And that one is going to get by Jouett and the runner from first. Gately will advance on the wild pitch. Runner on second, one out. Leg lift and the pitch. Just up high. Two and one. On the ground, up the middle, picked up by Bates. Throw to first, two away. 
Gately did advance to third. Four to three goes Mignon. Newton down to their final out. John Jewett has got to block every, anything and anything. Everything and anything. O'Leary in line for the save here. If he can get the final out. There's a strike, one and one on Swain. O'Leary deals. Just high. Two and one. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, high fly ball to right field. Now going over towards foul territory. The die by Thomas. And he almost had it but could not come up with it. It was in foul territory, so no harm done. A great effort by Thomas. And Newton's down to the last strike. Short. Yep. Two and two. Thomas started the game in left field, moved over to right, so Obed could take over in left. Larry set to deal. Did he go? No. Yep. Full count. There is warm up action for post 77. Hit in the air, fouled away. The battle continues, the suspense continues. I got to see a manicurist tomorrow. <laughs> Hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field, ranging in and making the catch for the final out is the center fielder. Brad Seymour ends the game as he makes the catch. And post 77 has won 10 to eight over Newton. What a game. What, what a, a game. game. That was unbelievable. I don't know if it's possible to have any more action in a baseball game than that. What a battle these two teams had here this evening. Absolutely unbelievable. We're gonna take a quick timeout. We'll come back and recap this game, but let's keep the uh, cameras rolling while these two teams shake hands. They both played extremely well tonight. Ashland Post 77 defeated Somerset in game one of the state tournament, 16 to two on Saturday, July 22nd, which meant for the Sunday, July 23rd game, they earned a date with District 5 foe, Newton under the lights at Fino Field in Milford. Post 77 lost to Newton both times they played them this season, so would they get revenge? Top of the first, Newton got the offense started early. Going to allow Hodgson, the easy advance to second base. A frustrating situation here where you clearly see some runners interference, but the no call has Jake Obed heated. Runner leading off of second, Obed takes a look and now is set to deal. This is hit in the air to right field and that is going to drop down for a base hit being waved around third is Hodgson and it is going to be one to nothing Newton, an RBI double for Mars Janik. Newton put up three runs in the first and then added two more in the third and led five nothing until Ashland came up in the bottom of the fourth. Set to deal to Pesson. And he puts this one up the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Hornung. He comes around to score, and Ben Thomas up to third. It's an RBI double for Zach Pesson. There is some life in that Ashland dugout. As this is up the middle, it takes a couple hops on the grass. Throw over by the second baseman in time, but a run scores. Ben Thomas comes around to score the second post-77 run on the sacrifice RBI ground out by Lewis Rossi. Coker looks at third and deals a breaking pitch. Oxy will get a little boot shot back to Coker, who's going to throw it away. Over the first baseman's head it goes, and Zach Pesson has scored the third post-77 run of the night. Wow. 
That is a bad error if you're Newton. Coker looks at second and is set to deal. Runner taking off to throw over to third. And it is not going to be in time. They give Ansu the stolen base. That was a close one. Offitter do up next. Up the third base side, and that is gloved by the third baseman. The throw across is a tough one. It's not in time. It got away from the first baseman. A run already in for post 77. It's a 5-4 to four ball game. I'm giving that a single. That was a tough throw to make. Taking off over to second to throw up. Is not in time. A stolen base for Seymour. And I think Seymour did beat that out. That is a good call there by the umpire. Evan has responded. Runner leading off of second, the lineup and the pitch. Down low, briefly got away from the catcher. The throw to third is not in time. The speedy Seymour beats it out. He's, he's angry. He's still hot over that play in the first inning. Coker deals. Up the first base side, past the reach of the first baseman. Fair ball. The game is tied as Seymour comes around to score. Obin still going over to second base. He's loving it. Five to five. This game has had all kinds of suspense. Up the third base side, past the reach of the third baseman. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Obed. The throw in is off the mark. Obed scores. He didn't. The catcher did not give him a lane. And Obed is loving it. The catcher was looking for interference. Payback. But he did not give Obed. A path to home plate, as he should. And all is well as Jackson Horning over at second base after driving in the lead run. Ronan Bates up to third. Has no warm-up action whatsoever. Up the left side, and that takes an awkward hop past the third baseman. It goes. Bates around to score. And it is 7-5, post 77. The throw over to second to try to get Thomas from the catcher is going to be dropped by the second baseman. A seven-run inning, 7-5 seven to five remained the score until post 77 came up again the very next inning. Wind up in the pitch up the right side. That's going to trickle through for a base hit. Lead runner being waved around. The throw in is going to be not in time. Ansi scores and will throw up to second. Obed safe. And it's an 8-5 ball game. Jake Obed taking out his frustrations on the field. And he gets his second RBI base hit of the game. Routes two on. And this is a very slow roller. Up the grass. No one's going to get to it in time. And another post-77 run's going to score. The throw home. And they have Obed in a pickle. He runs out of the base paths. And he's out. Two more in the fifth. 9-5 to five post 77, but in the top of the eighth, Newton was looking for a comeback against relief pitcher Dylan O'Leary. Whoa. For those of you just joining us, it has been one exciting game here at Fino Field. And that one going to get by Jewett. Took an awkward bounce in front of him, and another run scores. Newton closed in. It's 9-7, to seven, one out, two on. Jimmy Hodgson at the plate. He deals. And this is hit in the air to right field, and it is caught. Runner from second is going to tag and head to third, and he will be successful in doing so. But did he tag? And no, he did it! It's a double play! A great throw in from center field. Ronan Bates catches the runner, not tagging up, and they get out of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth now. Could post 77 add some insurance? Checking at third, and the runner is picked off. He's gonna head home. The third baseman bobbled the ball. The throw to the plate is going to be off the mark. The catcher could not lay the tag on Hornung, and it's another post-77 run. 10 to seven, Ashland. Ashland led 10 to seven, heading to the top of the ninth. Newton down to their final three outs, but they weren't ready to give up just yet. Catcher. Having a pretty good day at the plate. We'll send this one into center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Byrne is going to be waved around third and will easily score Newton's eighth run of the night. An RBI single for Gately. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field. 
ranging in and making the catch for the final out is the center fielder. Newton gets one run, but it's not enough as Ashland Post 77 takes them down by a final of 10 to eight and improves their record in the state tournament to two and zero, oh, and most importantly, stays in the winner's bracket. Post 77 next meets up with Braintree on Tuesday, July 25th, 7.30 p.m. at Fino Field in Milford under the lights. Jake Obid went two for four at the plate, had a walk, a couple RBIs, and a run scored. He also pitched seven and a third, striking out eight, and battled through a very tough Newton lineup. He was all smiles and so happy to capture the W against the Division V foe. I mean, we definitely in the start of the game, we fell away from our approach we've had all season. Um, and myself included, especially, I come out there, I was way too hyped. I walked the guy on four pitches. Um, I think I threw 30 in the first and then like another like 25 or 30 in the third inning. So I mean, take away those, I, mean, I would have hopefully been able to go online. But, um, but I mean, we, we had a little meeting, um, we got back to our approach and all it took was just scoring that first run, just getting that first guy across. And then right after that, it just kept carrying over. Um, I think we got seven or eight in that inning. Um, so that was, I mean, yeah, that was, that was unbelievable. And I mean, it just speaks volumes of this team. One through nine, we can hit. Everybody can play the field. Everybody has each other's backs, and we're all resilient. We don't quit. And we have fun while we're doing it, too, which is the best part. Uh, you you uh, certainly seemed like you had a lot of fun out there today, that's for sure. Uh, now, in that first inning, you got frustrated when it, it was a clear interference uh, uh, with, with the runner uh, you know, trying to get to first base. It was clearly some interference there. You didn't like the call. You ended up giving up a few runs, but then you seemed to uh, settle down. Um, could you talk about what was going through your head when that call was made? Was it uh, just anger, or uh, what was going through your head when that happened? I mean, so when I, when I got up and grabbed the ball, I was expecting to see the umpire holding his fist up for an out. Um, I mean, he didn't. He thought it was. He thought it wasn't interference, but you know, they had an umpire up there who said it was. Uh, anyway, um, so I mean, I was I was definitely angry because then it started to spiral. But I, I should not have let that call get to me. I should have settled in, stuck with my approach, and just thrown strikes. But I got a little too pissed, and I was getting pissed at every everything. My teammates too. Um, but I mean, they had my back, and they picked me up when I needed it. And then I was able to get on a roll. And then in the third, I think I let up two more. Um, and I was just, I mean. Thanks to like, I mean, Babs was in here, literally. No one's in there every, anymore. No, I get out of here. <laughs> Babs was in here after every inning, like talking to me, settling me, settling me down, and that helped me really gain my composure and keep it when things got rough a little bit. Well, then on the seven-run rally, you seemed like you were having the time of your life out there. You were all smiles out there, and I believe we caught you dancing on the mound a few times. Oh yeah, uh, I played beat it. I couldn't, I could not. I was dancing my wind up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed like after that happened, though, you had to go uh, prove something. You wanted revenge. Yeah. Uh, so what was it like to get that revenge? It, it, had a, it had a taste pretty sweet. Oh, uh, yeah, and especially against this team. I mean, that's a very good team, but uh, I hate those kids. I hate every single kid on that team. Um, so that was sweet. And it was, I, I find it really funny that uh, they tried to talk to us, talk some smack after, uh, after losing in a state, state tournament game. So... Uh, <laughs> All right, well, uh, how's the arm feeling, by the way, after uh, 125 pitches or so? So the arm before this game, feeling horrible. Um, adrenaline's pumping right now. It feels great. When I wake up in the morning, I'm not really, I don't even know if it'll be there. I don't even know. When I turn over and look, I don't know if it's going to still be attached to my body. So uh, we'll have to see come, uh, come 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right, well, we'll let you go rest up and get ready for tomorrow night's game. Congratulations on a great one tonight, Thank Jake. You. I appreciate it. Excellent. And now uh, head coach uh, Derek Johnson, coach, that had to be uh, an emotional roller coaster for everyone on the team and you. Uh, what an unbelievable game that was. Can you just talk about uh, what was going through your head throughout this wild, wild game tonight? No, I was excited coming in here. You know, we got the first win in, I think, our program's history in the States. Um, I think the problem is, you know, what took him off his, his game is uh, – just, uh, you know, just uptight, nervous, exactly. His adrenaline, his heart was going through the roof when I went out there in the first inning. And, you know, we just got to settle down and, you know, get back to our game. And I told him, I go, this is nothing like the, just like the Medford game. You go down 8-2, to two, you're going to come back. You just got to keep fighting. And then they were just all uptight, and Babo was huge. In the, but Babo was huge. He got Jake calmed down, got through that inning, got through the next inning. Like, and like Jake said, we get that first run, and the momentum goes, and we just... 
pedal to the ground. And what do you think led to that seven run rally? Do you think it was wanting to beat this Newton team so bad that really just gave them the adrenaline to just have a, the, a crazy inning like that to score seven runs? Do you think adrenaline played a part in that inning? Uh, I think it was. And then it was just like, you know, they got back to how we play baseball. You know, we want to have fun. You know, they were quiet. They, like I said, I'm going to say it over and over, uptight. Right. You know, you, we, we're a loose team. And once we got loose, you get that first one, the kids start cheering, loosen them up, and it just it's effective. Well, Coach, it's been a lot of fun so far, and we're looking forward to more fun games, including tomorrow night. We'll let you go rest up. Congratulations on another W. Thank you. Thank you.